There are very many good people in this world, but there are only a few who can be regarded as truly great. They keep themselves above the trivialities of life and are motivated by an irrepressible sense of mission in life. Founder Secretary of Ramakrishna Mission Ashram Narendrapur and former Secretary of Ramakrishna Mission Institute of Culture, Kolkata, Swami Lokeshwaranandaji Ananda Ji Maharaj was one such great monk, a monk without frontiers. He looked upon the whole humanity as one huge family and felt concerned about its welfare and progress. Swami Lokeshwaranandaji Ananda Ji Maharaj was born on 19th April 1909 in Kiragachi in the district of Khulna, East Bengal, now Bangladesh, the place where Yavan Haridas, a disciple of Sri Chaitanya, was born. Kiragachi was Lokeshwaranandaji's mother's village. Kiragachi was famous for its Rama temple with the images of Rama, Sita, Lakshman and Mahavir. The people who lived at Kiragachi and the neighboring villages consider Rama to be their guardian. They felt they all were under his protection. Before Kanai left home forever to become a monk, he went to Kiragachi and sought Rama's permission. Kanai did his primary education up to class 4 from Hakimpur school on the other side of the river Sunai. Swami Lokeshwaranandaji's mother was Shikhor Bashini Devi and his father was Bashantukumar Bandopadhyay. Although he was given the name Shivapado at birth, he was always known by his nickname Kanai. Kanai was very close to his mother and most influenced by her. Even when he was a child, she inspired him to become a monk. His father's home was in Baripara at the village Magura in Shatkhira. Rani Rashmani's son-in-law, Mathur, lived at Shonabere, a village close to Baripara and the villages around it were under his jurisdiction. Once, Sri Ramakrishna and Hridai accompanied Mathur Babu to his home village of Tala. Kanai had his secondary education at the B-Day institution and he passed his matriculation exam at the Lalmanir Hart School in Rangpur. The headmaster of his school Sri Chandra Sandal was his main inspiration. Swami Lokeshwarandaji said, The headmaster always talked about Sri Ramakrishna, Ma and Swamiji. That would take me to another world. I'd listen to him for hours, completely unaware of the time. Neither of us felt tired, neither the speaker nor the listener. Sometimes he would lend me some books to read. He also advised me to spend more time in meditation. Back home, I tried to meditate as long as I could. My heart was full of bliss. I didn't care much for studies. The other teachers would say, We expect you to get a scholarship in the exam. You have to be a judge or a magistrate. But the headmaster protested, don't pay any attention to them. I want you to be a monk. One day, his wife scolded him. Why are you asking someone else's son to become a monk? How will his parents feel? 
Why don't you advise your own son to be a monk? But the headmaster replied, I'd be very happy if my son really becomes a monk. I deem it a privilege for him to, as well as for our family. One day, the headmaster said, Mahapurush Maharaj is staying at Belur Mat now. Please go there soon and ask him for his blessings. In Lokesh Sharanandaji's own words, I accepted Mahapurush Maharaj as my guru from that very day. I decided to go to Belur Mat by any means and take refuge at his feet. Swami Lokeshwar Randaji said, It was half past three in the afternoon and the temples were just opening. I entered, there was nobody there. Only one monk was there and I said, uh, Where is the shrine? He said, Go this way. You have to climb up the steps. It is on the first floor. You know, the temple had not then come into being. There was the old shrine. It was on the first floor of an old building. As I was climbing, Swami Shivananda, who lived just opposite the shrine, he was on the first floor. He opened the window of his room. He saw me. Even as I look back, I feel he was waiting for me, as if he was waiting to welcome me. He knew I was coming. There's no reason why he himself should open the window. He had a tendency, he might have asked somebody to open the window, but he did open it, and opened it, and saw me, and began to laugh. Hello, where are you from? Who are you? Very happy. I didn't know what to say. At once two attendants came running to me. They took me to him. And he repeated the same question. And when I said that I had just finished my school course, he wouldn't believe it. And he wouldn't even believe it that I had come all the way on a bicycle. Look, this boy, barely 16, he has finished his school course. Or maybe I looked sh much shorter than I should have given my age. But some or other, he thought uh, it incredible that I should have finished my school course at that age. And that I had come all the way on a bicycle from that far off place, Khedirpur, as it is known. And he was very kind. And... That is how it started. And all the senior monks began to love me. In fact, I, as a look back, I feel they spoiled me in a way, you know. They made me think very highly of myself. <laughs> all of them were very kind to me. And one day, Swami Atma Bolhananda, my teacher's maternal and uncle, had by then come down to Belur Mod, and a few others took me to Mahapurush Maharaj. Of course, I used to go to him whenever I visited Belu Mata, and I visited it every Sunday. And they said, Maharaj, this, he's a very nice boy, but he hasn't had any initiation yet. Will you please initiate him? And I began to weep. You know, why I began to weep, I don't know, I began to weep. And he was very pleased. Said he is Baba. Baba means father, but then you sometimes address your own child as Baba. Yes, Baba. Certainly. Right away I will give you my you initiation. Well, I don't care for formalities. So he started giving me the mantra. And the monks read it would come to introduce me to him, ran away. And he 
<laughs> initiated within and there. You see, that is how it happened, my initiation. Lokeshwaranand Ji Maharaj took charge of the Pathuriya Ghata Ashram in May June 1946. Maharaj himself was then living from hand to mouth. He had practically nothing at his disposal. Still he wanted to keep the students without church. Although the ashram continued to grow and thrive, the surrounding area was not favorable for an educational institution. As a result, the residents of the students' home were having great difficulty with their studies and spiritual practices. A new place called Ukhila Paikpada near Rajpur was selected. The government acquired the land and handed it over to the Ramakrishna Mission on 30th March 1956. The name Narendrapur was given to the place by Swami Madhubanandaji Maharaj, the General Secretary of the Ramakrishna Mot and Mission. At that time, Swami Shankaranandaji Maharaj was the President of the Ramakrishna Mot and Mission. He consecrated the foundation of Brahmananda Bhavan on the auspicious day of Makar Shankranti on 14 January 1957. The college came into being two years after the school. Then came the Blind Bias Academy. The history of Pathuryaghata's evolution to Narendrapur will remain incomplete unless we mention Rambagan. In Swami Lokeshwarananda's own words, Rambagan turned into an ill-reputed slum whose inhabitants were called domes. But one could hardly see anywhere else people with such artistic talent and intelligence as these inhabitants of Rambagan. They were poor and uneducated, and it is difficult to imagine how they lived in such unhygienic surroundings. A night school was started for adult education. Later, we opened a school for the children also. These days, they are being trained in various kinds of handiwork and their per capita income has also increased. The old huts have been torn down and a new multi-storied housing complex has been built for them. The slum dwellers themselves took part in the construction work. In 1993-94, Swami Lokeshwarlandaji was appointed the convener of the centenary celebrations of Swami Vivekananda's address at the World's Parliament of Religions in Chicago. Now that the Parliament of Religions has practically concluded, I, as convener, thank you all on behalf of the separate committee appointed by the Ramakrishna Mark and the Ramakrishna Mission. In spite of the tremendous work he did, Swami Lokeshwarnandaji was always a support and shelter to countless people, young and old, men and women alike. Just as Swami Lokeshwarnandaji had tremendous love and compassion 
so also he had immense zeal and dynamism. Swami Lokeshwaranda ji was always sweet spoken and outright gentleman. He could be firm when necessary but never rude. He utters tremendous importance to perfect behavior. He said, you can hurt a person more by rude words than by hitting him. He always put emphasis on the proper way of speaking, that is, with humility and sweetness. Another characteristic of Swami Lokeshwaranandaji was his patience and calmness. Even when our situation was very difficult and challenging, he would remain unperturbed. When others felt agitated, he would never lose composure. He once told a distinguished person, whenever you get excited, you lose ground to your opponent. Swami Lokeshwaranandaji guided his brother monks and workers not so much by rules but more by love. He had faith in them and allowed everyone freedom in his work. He did not like the workers briefing him at every step or consulting him frequently. He wanted everyone to understand his responsibility and to carry on with self-confidence. Oni bishes nemintrita, nemontrita. Ta shakale uthe eka raste bediye chen rasta. Ta shakota dekben. Ta jat chen rasta de. Ta lok jome gachi. Mem shay rasta eka bediye chen. Pichu ne eka dal bharutiyo. Ta na jat chen. चापिए Like a mother to her children, his love was for one and all. Many might have misused his love, but he could not help loving them anyway. It was not that 
he did not know their shortcomings but in spite of everything he loved them he would take on himself the sufferings of so many people and like shiva he had to absorb much poison so many people broken in spirit were inspired by him to stand up again he did this by talking to them or by calling them every day on the phone even people who are shallow who did not care much for religion were not unworthy of his love they would later be surprised to see themselves changed they did not even know when self confidence and discipline appeared in their lives they knew they were not the same persons anymore and they discovered a deeper meaning to life swami lokeshwar nand ji felt that a monk must be large hearted to him religion meant love therefore a heartless person in spite of possessing all other qualities was neither a proper monk nor a true devotee in his eyes he encouraged devotees including housewives to study regularly his idea was that a person should try to remain on an intellectually higher level In 1984, Swami Lokeshwar Nand Ji was invited to Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria, to attend an international peace conference. On his way back, he stopped at Moscow, and two very influential organizations, the Academy of Sciences and the Writers Union, gave him a special reception. He became very friendly. towards the members of these two societies so much so that the next year an international peace conference was held at the institute of culture in collaboration with these two organizations swami lokeshwar nand ji went to russia seven times in 1988 a vedanta center was opened in moscow through his inspiration later it was recognized as a branch center of the ramakrishna order through the years many countries invited him to come and speak this include bangladesh sri lanka thailand singapore malaysia england france germany switzerland italy the usa canada japan mauritius soviet russia Lithuania and Latvia I have always been a great admirer of Russia It's difficult to explain why I love Russia so much Maybe the people are more or less the same as in India Here I meet people who are open minded and they are also modest and they do not think that they are the best in the world and i find that there are people who are always complaining about things in the country people in india do the same thing always complaining nothing wrong if you complain but you do not know. do not close your eyes and do not pretend that there is also progress in the country there are things that go wrong but there are also things that are good man is supreme yes he makes mistakes right. but he can also correct those mistakes there are problems no doubt but man can overcome those problems man can travel from one planet to another planet what wonderful things 
your people have done in the matter of conquering space. If you can conquer space, why can't you conquer also the problems which you face now, problems of the shortage of food, of clothing, of housing, of employment, and so on, these problems. Name one country in the world where these problems do not exist. Go to America and meet the people there and they will find they are always complaining. I am not against complaining, but I do not want anybody to think that by complaining only the problems should be solved. So Swami Vivekananda used to say, face the brute, uh, don't run away. If you have a problem, overcome it. You see, India is a, is a remarkable country. Sometimes I think that India is a liberal, a possible. Some people say, no, this country is mad. People are mad. Swami Vivekananda was speaking about India somewhere in America. He said, suppose you go to the Himalayas, go deep into the mountains, and there you will see a man standing in ice-cold water. The water is as deep as his own throat, and he is there alone. You are a passerby, you stop and ask, Brother, what are you doing there? The man will say, I am meditating on truth. At another point you might see a man sitting on, this, on the bank of the river, all sand, and this sand burning hot. And you stop and you ask, Brother, what are you doing there, sitting on this burning sand with the sun on your, over your head? The man will say, I am meditating on truth. You may say, these people must be mad. One man standing in the ice-cold water, another man sitting on the burning hot sand both saying, I am meditating on truth. Think whatever you like about India, but that is India. Truth is the goal of life. The whole country think truth is above everything else. Swami Vivekananda used to say, you can give up everything for truth, but you cannot give up truth for anything. Truth is considered to be higher than any kind of religion that you can conceive of. Truth is God and God is truth. Truth is more important than gold. Truth more important than political power. Truth more important than scholarship. Truth is the most important thing for man. You may have everything in the world, but if you don't have truth, if you are not trying to attain truth, then you are gone, you are lost. You preach at the institute. We preach, you know. Yes, that is the question everybody asks. How can I get peace of mind? I have an answer to this, which for us will disappoint most people. Don't be selfish. If you are selfish, you will never be happy in life. A selfish man thinks his family exists for him, his society, his country, his nation, the whole world, and even God exists for him. Think of other people also. In 1991, during his visit to Lithuania, Lokesh Sharanandaji met the president of Lithuania, Professor Lance Burgess. It was a very cordial meeting for about 45 minutes. I gave my life for you. But what are you doing for your own? Lokesh Sharanandaji's continuing endeavor was to instill the highest ideals of truth 
in the hearts of people of all walks of life. He knew that tastes and abilities varied from one person to another, and as a result, people's outer and inner worlds also varied. He realized that people should be encouraged to move forward from where they were. Just as Swami Lokeshwaranda ji had tremendous love and compassion, so also he had immense zeal and dynamism. Although he was nearly 90 when he passed away, he was still young in vision and vigor. He still had much to offer to the world. He was always full of enthusiasm and had the ability to see the whole ocean in a drop of water. In an ordinary person, he could see extraordinary qualities, and thus he could inspire self-confidence in everyone. He respected one and all and showed due rigor to everyone, however small and insignificant one might be. भवे नाना मार्गैर इह समुदिते दूशन शते हितंतत्वंचे तुम शिवमति रगाद्य प्रतिदिशं नरेंद्रास्य सोसव जयति विशया पास्तर हिदयह Tato gatva gatva vividha matama shretya bhajadam Samipe sandehad anupagata mukti kathamapi Shreto yasam siddham dvijamatha jahau samshayamalam Vivekanando sau jayati jadatam the last few years, Lokeshwaranandaji was immersed in the Upanishads. I even dream of the Upanishads in my sleep, he used to say. He had finished translating nine Upanishads into English and was working on the tenth. The characteristic of his Upanishads was the simple presentation of the highest philosophical truths. Swami Lokeshwarandaji often said, I want to die in harness. His wish was fulfilled. 
Even on the 28th of December, he translated a portion of the Brihadaranya Upanishad and also gave dictation while living for the hospital in a wheelchair. Once Lokeshwar Nandaji told his attendant, who had been with him for 32 years, be fearless. If you are afraid, you will lag behind. Always keep your head high. Don't you know what the soldiers do in the battlefield? They work on even when fatally wounded. You have to be like them. Lokeshwar Nandaji Maharaj did just that. He always walked on with unfailing steps towards the goal. Maharaj has gone, but he left behind an exemplary life dedicated to the ideals of Swami Vivekananda. Tato gatva gatva vividha matama shretya bhajadam samipe sandehad anupagata mukti kathamapi shreto yas sangsiddham dvijamatha jahau sangshayamalam vivekanando sau jayati jadata mukta hridayaha